So Apiary just came out from Stonemaier Games. Let's find out where it's gonna fit in your collection right now. In a far distant future, humans no longer inhabit Earth. Over the span of untold generations, one species of the humble honeybee evolved to fill that void. They grow in size and intelligence to become a highly advanced society and made substantial technological advances, including space travel. In Apiary, you'll control a faction that starts the game with a hive, a few resources, and worker bees. In this worker placement board game, you'll travel to the great beyond and explore new planets to gather resources. With those resources, you'll advance your civilization by developing new technologies, recruiting specialist bees to help the hive, and build farms to store those resources as well as assist returning worker bees. If you are prolific, you might be remembered enough for your achievements to be carved in the hive and gain glory in the form of victory points. Now your workers can only take a few actions, with the benefits you get increasing relative to the worker bee's strength. Your bees grow stronger a few different ways. They can be bumped off an action location, allowing you then to upgrade them, or when you choose to retrieve all your workers from the board on your turn. But for your turn, you will mainly be placing workers in order to gain the specified benefit. For instance, you'll be converting resources that you've received previously gain seed cards for a quick benefit and in-game goals, or add additional worker bees to your civilization. But be careful because once you take your most powerful strength action of four, you'll be forced to hibernate, leaving your legacy to be determined by future workers. The game ends when all spots in the hibernation comb have been filled and the person with the most points wins. Hey everyone, it's Charlie from Board Game Feels and that's a good idea how Apiary feels. Now, before we get started in my full review, I'm gonna ask that you please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and maybe help out someone else. Okay, let's get to it. So just to give a little bit of background about me, Stonemaier Games is one of my favorite publishers. I'm a big fan of Viticulture, I'm a big fan of Scythe, and I love Tapestry. Those three are probably all in my top games of all time. So when I heard they were coming out with a new game, naturally, I was excited. The only downside was I wasn't a giant fan of the theme of this game. It's space bees. So I kind of cold my expectations. And honestly, I'm glad I did because this game after the first playthrough was fantastic. I thought it was gonna be a bit of a heavier game, but in actuality, it's kind of an introduction worker placement game. Now, maybe it's not the first worker placement you should ever play, but it's that next step up. It's that Raiders of the North Sea, it's that Architects of the West Kingdom. And really, there's so many options you can do in the game. I love it, it kind of has like a video game open world feeling. There's really no wrong choice, it's just what strategy do you want to go to? So my favorite action in this game is the explore action, and it feels great. So let me give you an example. Let's say I place my one worker strength bee there. And with its strength being one, that means I can move this queen bee who represents the civilization one space orthogonally. Now let's do that. And I flip this over and I automatically get a benefit, which is a seed card. And that in of itself is really cool. But what's even better is you get to actually explore a planet and decide what resource you want to put on it. So this is two empty boxes, so someone who visits here next would get to place another resource. And then I would get that resource. So I love this action because throughout the entire game, you're kind of building out the solar system, if you will, and you're deciding what future worker placement and resources will be in the game for everyone. Because I can return back to this spot and gain the green resource, but I can also put, let's say, this resource, and I would get both of those. Let's also talk components. The components are very nice. If you look right here, the B is really cool. I'm guessing as a prototype, there were just dice, but all you gotta do is just rotate them and that changes the strength of the worker. I also really appreciate the graphic design. You can clearly tell the layout of each component. At the bottom of all these hexes is how much it costs. On the left is the victory points you get and on the top is the benefit or ongoing benefits you get. The board itself is also laid out very well. You have these seven actions and you can clearly see this is where explore happens, this is where advance, convert, 
carve, grow, research, and hibernation. Okay, some more things that I like. Well, these worker bees are great. I love how the benefits are relative to the strength of the worker bee, as well as the workers essentially retire, they hibernate. And I love that because that's reminiscent of some of my favorite games of all time, like Village back here. And there's even an old, old game that I'm sure nobody's played, but it's called Praetor, where workers would retire too as you're building out Rome. I wish more games would do this because it adds more variability and having different benefits per the strength of your worker is just a really cool design and more games need to do this. And having your workers hibernate make you make additional choices that you wouldn't normally have to make in a worker placement game. Another thing that has to be mentioned is the game really does a good job of making you feel like you're building something. You're placing these hexes out in your home hive, and as you do, you're getting either immediate benefits, ongoing benefits, or benefits when you retrieve all your workers. And that's a great feeling in board games, just simply placing one worker to trigger four or five other actions and getting all those benefits. I mean, it's, it's what we dream of as board gamers, right? To do one little thing and nah, your master plan happened and five other things triggered. It's so cool. Now let's talk about some of my critiques. Well, like I mentioned up at front, I'm not the biggest fan of this theme and maybe I could argue the game is pretty themeless. Maybe if you're teaching the game for the first time, Having hexes and putting them in a hive might help teach new players, but for us experienced gamers, I'm not really seeing anything that helps bring the theme or drive it forward. For instance, there's no reason this couldn't be a city building game or some kind of fantasy themed game where you're exploring. Um, the theme itself to me doesn't tie in to what you're actually doing, which usually helps me when teaching. So that might be a positive or a negative for you. Also, I wanted to talk about, there's a point in this game about 75% of the way through I've found through all of my playthroughs that the game kind of runs itself to the end. And what I mean by that is you kind of know what's gonna happen and you know what you're gonna do and you know when someone's gonna put the hibernation uh, workers out and that's not necessarily a bad thing. A lot of engine builders, a lot of worker placement games have that, but I did want to mention that at some certain point, you kind of know who's going to win the game and you kind of know what's going to happen. Since we're talking critiques as well, let me discuss replayability and variability. As typical with Stonemaier games, they give you a ton of cards to play with. There is a ton of these hex tiles here. I only put half out just so I could film the game easier, but there's double on each of these tiles. And so while that lends to a lot of replayability and variability, some people in the past have criticized Stonemeyer for having it be unbalanced in the way. I have never felt that way. As I said, Tapestry is one of my favorite games of all time. Um, but just so you know, that is still there. There could be possible combos to where, oh my God, how did they do that? That's so cool. Why can't I do that? Um, but that's just kind of what you're getting with this game, and I didn't find it too swingy. These level four workers really are powerful, but there's also cards, there's also these carve hexes that have some pretty powerful abilities that trigger. And lastly, as typical with Stonemaier games, there isn't much player interaction or social dynamics. You are pretty much playing your own engine and see who can run it the best, and whoever does wins the game. Okay, so what do I rank Apiary? Well, I'm actually still really shocked how much I enjoyed this game after the first playthrough. Again, I thought it was gonna be a little bit more of a heavier game, a little bit more deep in thought, head down, thinky. It's not. It's a nice intro to medium weight worker placement game with a lot of options and replayability, and I like that. For me, I'm giving this a 7.5, and I would happily play this anytime anyone wants to bring this to the table. And especially with the game's runtime, I've played mostly at two players and it lasts about an hour. That's where it's at for me. I get a lot of strategy and a little time. Okay, it looks like it's time for hibernation for me. I know this game just came out, but if you've played it, let me know what you think or maybe some things you didn't like about it. Let me know in the comments and we can discuss it below. It's fresh, I'm ready to talk about it. Okay, that's it. I'm Charlie from Board Game Feels. Peace. <laughs>